and now it's all caught up in our prop shaft. And we're gonna go explore some of the ma mangroves. It is intense navigation through Kailisar Creek. <laughs> I got the part. This is so exciting. And new piston. And that should be the last things we need to disconnect from the engine before we lift it up. Not as easy as it's sounding to me. What's going on there? Oh, so irritating. I really don't understand it. The current's quite strong here and it switches directions, but mostly it goes in this direction. And we have two stern anchors to stop us from turning into the channel or going side to the current. And one of them has always gotten loose. Like every night or two, it gets a little loose and it seems like we're just pulling it along. But now actually it seems like the current is actually just grabbing the anchor and doing what it wants with it because now it's underneath our boat and way over there, which doesn't make sense because our other anchor is tight. So we never went far enough that way to have the anchor tight over there. So it seems like the anchor is just rolling along the bottom, doing nothing essentially. And now it's all caught up in our prop shaft. So I'm hoping if, if I had, hadn't just taken a shower, I probably would just jump in and scout it out. But I don't really want to do that because I'm all clean for a change. So I'm going to try using the boat hook here on this end. Alex will let off on that end and we'll see if we can pull up the slack end on this end. Let's hope it works so I don't have to get wet. All right, that's me. Give me slack. More. More. Like, like a lot more. Let it out. All right, we got it untangled. Hopefully the prop shaft didn't bend while it was pu pulling on essentially, or a rudder for that matter. Anyway, I really don't like this setup. We're gonna have to figure something out, but it looks like the anchor is somewhere over here. How it ended up way over there, I have no clue. I'm gonna say our Mantis Anchor is by far the best one and then the Danford, which is one of the other one on our stern, that one's been holding. But the Bruce Anchor, pff, big time fail. It is also quite a small one though. But yeah, it's just, it keeps dragging and just causing problems. Wow, look what I pulled up. Oh. Well, we got a second anchor out of the deal. It's a little bent, but that's probably why our anchor didn't hold up so good. Well, it's currently high tide. And we've had just about enough of spending time on the sailboat. Sometimes you just need to get away, stretch the legs, or go explore somewhere. So we're using our friend's dinghy, nice six horsepower four stroke with a nice big dinghy for our comfort. And we're gonna go explore some of the ma mangroves. So let's get going. Super cool. I love mangroves. They always look so neat and there's always these crazy winding paths through them. It. 
It is intense navigation through Kayisa, Kayilisa Creek. There's a lot of shallow sections in between here, but Cory is doing pretty well at avoiding it all. It's beautiful. I am loving this so much. Oh, we found a dead end. We got the motor way up because we want to be extra careful since it's not our dinging to not run aground. And it's getting a little tight in here. We've been trying to anchor as far away as uh, possible to people because well we don't have the engine and the current's really strong here so our stern anchor hasn't been the most reliable considering it's only a 20 pound Danford and there's that catamaran that just kind of came in and dropped his anchor right next to us so if our stern anchor lets go we're pretty much gonna hit him so anyways, we're gonna go see him and have a little chat because we were just about to leave the boat by itself. But we don't want to come back to broken sailboat. We just wanted to give you a bit of a heads up on this sailboat over there. Yeah. And I just, we might, like we do have a stern anchor, but it's not the greatest. So it has happened that we've spun around, so. Oh, okay. And you have two anchors up? Two at the stern, but it's happened a couple times when the wind and the current match up that we actually drag on the stern anchor and have to release it. Yeah. So we should be clear of you anyway, but I just want to let you know in case something happens. Bye. See you later. I'm off to get some fuel and maybe some wood if I can for to hold up the engine when we take it out. Well, I am off to the post office because our engine parts are here. About two weeks later, or a little more after we've showed up in New Smyrna Beach. But we almost didn't get the parts. So if you do get a package shipped at a post office, make sure to write general delivery because otherwise they're just gonna ship it back to the sender. Which almost happened, but luckily I got the alert in my emails, noticed that there was the addressee 
unknown, so they were gonna ship it back. So I called the post office and they found it and they have it. Anything else I can do for you? No, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got the parts. This is so exciting. Whew. We've been waiting for those engine parts for way too long. And it was just a 40 minute walk all the way to here. Got it. Open the other box. Oh. We got our box of goodies for our engine. Although it feels quite light, I'm hoping the piston is actually in here. I also found a bunch of wood for building some cribbing to hold the engine in place while we work on it so it's not just sitting on the oil pan. Oh, that might be it actually. Yeah, piston assembly. Surprisingly enough, it's quite light. It is the heaviest thing in the box though. There we go. Brand new piston. That looks so clean. We got the piston, the rings are already on there so I don't have to mess around with that. That's always nice. We got some paint to touch up our engine. Fancy head gasket among all the other gaskets that we might need. Ooh, we even have uh, rings for our banjo fittings for the fuel, so that's great. Banjo music instrument? Yeah. <laughs> then we have, what do we have here? Our bearings. Our bearings for the rods. Anyway, they're in here. And then we have another set of rings to replace the other set on the other piston that's still good. All right, we got some work ahead of us. Now that we got all the parts, we can tear apart the boat <laughs> and get that engine out. <sighs> I wish I had a skill saw in times like this. We're just cutting up the blocks for our motor mount or for something to set our motor down on once we pull it out. And these two by sixes are not fun to cut with this little saw, but at least it works. It's just gonna take me a long time. Final things to disconnect are our power to the engine, both the ground going to the back here and the wires going to our starter. And that should be the last things we need to disconnect from the engine before we lift it up. We're going to try to lift it up out of this rather than dismantle everything. Um, we'll see how it goes. It might be a little more difficult than than I'd like, but that's what we're gonna test and see if we can do it. The Dodger has to come down. I got it. Say one. All right, let's try this. Shit, I don't have much pulling force, eh? No. Not as easy as it's sounding to me. Okay, tie it off. Alright, we're clear of the back ones. 
Okay, so now it's just the front ones that aren't clear yet. Yeah, so you gotta tie it off. Come help me. We'll try to lift it off the, okay. the mounts. Okay, move the battery. You're gonna have to go from that side. So, what's the game plan here, sweetie? Alright, you're gonna try... Is there anywhere you can lift here? Yeah. And sh just try to lift it up. Okay, I'm off the thing, but something went flying. It's fine, it's just a, uh, a washer. Yeah. Okay, alright, now we're gonna have to try to lift it some more. So you can go out, let it go for a sec, see where it lands. Yeah, go for it. Alright, I'm gonna lift while you pull. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, stop there for a sec. Uh, one more little lift. One, two, three. All right. It's part way out. Now we got we gotta turn it. Ready? Yeah. One more. All right, that's good. Okay, now what you're going to do yeah. is you're going to go over there, you're going to try to grab the back of the engine and turn it that way. And I'm going to grab the front and try to pull it out a little bit. Okay, i got to push it a little back to you. Alright, there we go, we're clear now. I'm going to bring it back to me. I think now the um, transmission is not clear. This engine is heavy. It's just a small little 13 horsepower engine, but it weighs a ton. We're, uh, we're part way out though. Check it out. We got it turned. Now we just got to pull it out of this hole. Whew. We got it out and around. That was the hardest part, I think. I don't know how we're going to get it. I don't know how we're going to get it back, but at least we got it out. All right, lower it slowly. One sec, one sec. All right, go ahead. Okay, stop for a sec. Yeah. Okay, one sec. Lock is falling over. Should All right, lower it a little more. Yeah. Okay, stop. Yeah. Fuck. Are you ready? Yeah, go. All right, it's down. membership when you get your workout like that. I'm so excited that the engine went out pretty smooth because that went way smoother than expected which doesn't happen often in a boat. Let's just be honest. Eh? But it's out so now Corey is reconnecting with the power because we had to disconnect the batteries but the engine's gonna be out for a couple of days so we're gonna need some batteries still. That's really bad news because that means there might be metal chafings where we don't want them. A lot more than what I had planned to ever do on my engine. Our whole boat uh, turned into a bit of an engine shop. You can see the crack on the head of the piston all the way down the side and it even comes over here to the sleeve. I feel like we just keep finding problems with it. It's just doesn't want to end. Hopefully we're gonna hold well because the engine's still in pieces. Thank you.